Hey Scooter fans, welcome back. This is Adam from Blue Force E-Rides. So today we're just going to take a quicker look at the new LCD panel on the Nanrobot D6 Plus scooter. Uh, so it came into existence about a year ago. They started switching this out from the traditional, just the thumb throttle on there with the little display screen that most scooters actually have. But they wanted to upgrade it, make it a little bit nicer. And this is the one they switched to. This is also going to be on the very new N6 model, which is going to be coming out very soon. Super excited to see that one and to have a demo unit of it. Definitely come out to our event so you can check that out. Uh, but I'll put a link down to that below. You can get a pre-order on it. It's going to be $150 off. And super excited to have it. Has pretty much the same specs as the D6 Plus. So it's already a solid ride. So you know that from the get-go. But then you have this really cool, sleek, new design that's going to be on it. So definitely check that out. But let's get into this video. Switch this camera around so you can check out this new LCD display screen. All right, so this is the new screen right here. Uh, as you can see, it's very nice. It's mounted on the front of the scooter. Uh, to get it on, let's switch it on here. We're just going to power it up. And then we're going to hit the power on button right here. There you go. So this is super bright. You can see this in the daylight as well. With direct sunlight, it's not going to be as bright as this, of course, because you have the direct sunlight and then the reflection of the screen as well. But it's pretty bright out in here. This is my portable unit I take around with my scooters on the event. So there is some light streaming in here. You can see it's pretty bright out there today. But you can see it's still very bright. Um, so let's go over some of the, the display here. So you have the battery percentage here, which is very nice when you're riding. A nice quick display there too. But you also have the voltmeter on this as well. Um, this is for your single motor and dual motor. Um, so you can see this is set in single motor right now. And to switch that to dual motor, I'm going to hit the power button right over here. As you can see, now it switches to two little blinky circles there. So now you know you're in dual motor. Pretty simple. Much better than those standard yellow and red buttons you would see for a turbo and single motor. Sometimes you didn't know uh, what setting you were in, but this is nice and convenient with that. It shows you. Uh, super simple. Um, to switch through the gears, um, you're just going to switch the hit the M button over here on the side and we'll switch you to first, second, and third gear. Um, right here you have your speedometer, which is very nice, and that you're currently in kilometers per hour. That can be switched to miles per hour too for us Americans around here. Um, but if it doesn't matter, then you just keep it the same. But pretty much that is it with the screen here. Um, it's for the basic display. Uh, to switch on your lights, you have your little power button over here. You'll see a indicator there as well, right there, so you know you have your lights on. You also have right over here for your left and right turn signals. So you have your left and your right. Also nice to have on there so you don't you're riding around you don't realize that you left your turn signals on. So that's a nice little indicator there as well. Um, to get into the P settings, um, a lot of them are pretty much going to be the default, but if you wanted to change it, a couple things in there, it's pretty easy to get to. You're just going to hold down both of these buttons, and then you're going to go into the P settings. So P0 is pretty much just your wheel diameter. Uh, the default is 10. I can't really see that you'd be changing that too much, um, unless you're going to upgrade your tires, but... These tires are awesome already, so I can't really see you doing that. To get to the next one, I'm just going to hit the mode or M button. So now P setting number one is your voltage cutoff. If you wanted to change that and raise it up, the default is 43. If you wanted to have a you know another notification, if you didn't like the, the voltage to go down that low, you could change that. But pretty much I would think that would most people would like and keep that one the same. P2 is your magnetic poles uh, that's for the motor the default is 30 i would not go changing that unless you were changing the motor out but that's uh pretty much going to be a standard thing p3 uh, the default is one for this 
That is your speed sensor function. Uh, that is recommended not to change that. That's why it is blanked out there. Four is going to be your speed units. That's so that's going to be the default is your kilometers per hour. With the change that to miles per hour, you would just hold down your M button there. And then you could switch that to one if you wanted that into your miles per hour. Hold it down again to save it. And now it's saved to miles per hour. And also to go back to the previous one, you just hit the power button, this one over here, and go back to the previous P number. Moving on to number five. So that's your kickstart. So if you wanted to kick off first before your scooter motor would engage, you would change that. Uh, it, the default is zero, which is a non kickstart which is pretty much what I like to ride in. I don't like to kick off like the old school scooters, those old Razor scooters. Six is your turn on and off cruise control. I like to leave that on zero. I don't like cruise control on my scooters, so. So number seven is going to be the slow or fast start. So the default is zero and so that's basically if you want a little more ex acceleration from the get-go, spin those tires a little bit more, or it's a little bit slower acceleration, uh, that is P setting number seven. And these will all be down in the description as well, so no worry about writing these down. I'll put them down there. Uh, so eight is your max output. So that's your, if you wanted to reduce the maximum power, it's at 100%, which is the default. If you wanted to reduce it down and not have that max, you can do that, um, but most people keep that on 100. Nine is your brake setting. So if you like to have a little bit of EBS brake settings on there, two is the strongest, zero is off, and one is the weak. Um, so this is also like a regener regenerative braking. So it does add a little bit extra life to your battery as you're cruising around, gives you a little bit of extra braking power as well and will slowly recharge your battery um, as well. Some people like it, some people don't, but that is just personal preference. And then number 10 is not there, <laughs> but in the manual it does actually have it, but it just says it's a reserved function, so it's not available at this time. So once you're done with all the settings, you're basically just going to do the same thing is hold down both of these buttons and you'll go back to the main menu and there you go. So you can see that it changed to your miles per hour over here and then all your other settings are now changed. And one more thing I wanted to cover that also get a notification if you hit your brakes, get your a red triangle there shows you that you have the brakes engaged. Nice little feature. Uh, I know some people were concerned like, oh, why am I getting a red triangle? But that's what it's for. It's for the braking. So that is the overview of the new LCD screen from Nanrobot for the D6 Plus. And then coming out also in the N6. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was helpful to you. And just so you could see it as well. I know a couple of people were asking for it, so hopefully that was uh, cool to see. If you'd like to see more videos like this, definitely leave a comment down below and I'll upload them. No problems. And until next time, happy riding. Take care. Be safe.